we are gatekeepers of the home and the nation, relentless in prayer and intercession. Today I am living as a servant of the Lord. Every dust on your marital life, every dust on your marital destiny must not leave this place with you. Enterprising and creative, we are bold, daring, and full of faith. We are Daughters of Destiny. Today is day of the land. What a good God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Day number nine. What a good God. Let's rise up on our feet as we worship the King of Kings infinitely good God, the God that is always good. There is no aorta of anything bad in him. Let's just worship him right now. Yes, Lord. Bible says 
is he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Would you believe where you have walked, some people walked there and they were consumed. And so the Bible says that he will not suffer our foot to be moved. The sun shall not smite us by day, nor the moon by night. Can you lift up your voice? For delivering you from where others were consumed. For delivering your family. We are not, it, it is not as if we want those things to happen, but it is making us to appreciate the goodness of our God. Do you know who the evil that has happened? That God spared your life and mine, spared the lives of our family members, spared the lives of our, of our children, of our spouses, even those that we do not know, those deliverances. Can we thank Him this morning? Can you give Him glory? Can you give Him praise? For all you have done, we say thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. And so, eternal rock of ages, we thank you for today. Even in these nine days of this year, mighty are your words, mighty are your deeds, great are your deliverances. We thank you. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Put your hands together for Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. And I welcome you all to day number nine of 100 days of fire and power. I welcome everyone on Instagram and on Facebook. The Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. And everyone in this auditorium, the good Lord bless you. As you are rising up early to be with the Lord, the Lord himself will prepare something wonderful for you. Yeah. Fill your mouth with testimonies. Yeah. You know, they say his mercies are new every morning. We will not be tired. Amen. Every morning as we rise up, we receive a new grace. Amen. We receive a fresh revelation in the name of Jesus. And today is day number nine. My glory must shine. Your glory will shine. Amen. The glory of each and every member of your family will shine Amen. in the name of Jesus. And so, this morning, our topic, my glory must shine, we have our key scripture. From the book of 1 Corinthians 15, verse 41. It says, There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another in glory. Meaning, each and every one of us, we have different talents, we have different virtues, we have different things that God has embedded in us for our generation. And yesterday we started a study on the book of Esther. Uh, and I'm just going to relate this topic even to Esther. Even as a queen, Esther had influence. That was a time that her glory needed to come out to deliver her people. And so, each and every one of us, we carry something. So yesterday, just to do a little, um, a little uh, recap, for those who are just joining us, this is the program called 100 Days of Fire and Power from the Ministry of Daughters of Destiny. My name is Busola Jegede. This program will be on for 100 days of this year till April the 10th, every morning, 7.30 West African time. It's a time of sharing the word, of prayer, of prophecy, of positioning, of gaining divine wisdom and insight from the Holy Spirit. Today is just day number nine. And so if you're just joining us for the first time, it's a great time to be here. Today, we saw that in the book of Esther, something happened that God opened our eyes to that there were people who were manipulating the authority figure over the head of the different queens. It happened in the time of Vashti, and it was going to happen in the time of Esther, that the authority figure were being manipulated to cause harm to those queens, and we prayed about it. We also saw, uh, one of the lessons we learned was that we should not bring our private problems, our private challenges to the public domain. That Vashti knew that the man had a drinking problem, but now disobeying him in front of everybody jeopardized her life and her throne and her, you know, her honor. That sometimes we notice certain things, we must deal with it in the place of prayer, in the secret place, with help, counseling and whatever, and shouldn't expose the, uh, uh, the downsides of our marriage to everybody to see. Some people discuss their marital problems on social media or something they're going through, personal things on social media. That is not the right place. 
go to the place of wisdom and where you can get help. We also saw that evil decrees can be aborted with the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of prayer. And so the decree that prospered against Vashti, it did not prosper against Esther because they rose up in prayer. And we, we said that no matter what it is, when we rise up in prayer, uh, the Lord will answer us. And something else we saw was that Esther did not rely on her grace alone to pray. She got other people to pray with her. Sometimes you're going through an issue, your grace alone cannot carry it. She said, let all the Jews fast for me. Me too, I will gather my maidens. And so it is, we shouldn't be spiritually proud or we shouldn't be spiritually careless to think that we can handle some issues. There are some matters that come your way. You have to cry out. It's not a time to hide or a time to say you don't want anybody to hear because may we not be disgraced to upon them in the name of Jesus and you pray God will give you a strategy out of your problem so for the full detail of yesterday please go to uh, our Facebook page and our online TV uh, all this is on daughtersofdestiny.tv that's our online TV all these things are there now today we're moving on in the study of the book of Esther to begin to look at so many nuggets and insights in Esther chapter number 4 verse 7, Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him and of the sum of money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Jews to destroy them. Now, if you, I want to encourage everybody to read. There are just 10 chapters in the book of Esther. So Mordecai invested in the destruction of the Jews. He was willing to pay money not to train somebody to go through school. He was willing to pay money not to help the poor. He was willing to pay money not to help somebody who was a problem, but to destroy some people. And what is the lesson in this? It is that some people will make evil investment because they have an evil spirit in them. They can go to any length to destroy another person. And that's why the Bible says we should not be unaware of the devices of the enemy. I need you to quickly say this prayer. Say in the name of Jesus, any evil investment over my life and family and my work fail woefully. In the name of Jesus, any evil investment over my life and family fail woefully. In Jesus' mighty name. They are buying a plane ticket just to go and say a negative word or to be an evil witness. He was willing to pay money into the king's treasuries. Why? Because they needed money to carry out that decree. They needed money to send people to all the provinces to enforce the law. And so he was trying to say, I'll make it easy for you to do that evil. Today, in the name of Jesus, anyone that prophesied to your life and mine, who has taken up responsibility to invest in our destruction, they will fail woefully. In the name of Jesus, somebody that decreed into the life of the family members, wherever anyone is sponsoring our downfall, they will fail woefully. In the name of Jesus. What do we see in the book of Esther? How come Haman hated Mordecai so much? They didn't really have any form of uh, interaction to that, to that level. All that we know was that Mordecai was a gate man. And Mordecai was a gate man. Being a Jew, the Jews do not bow. They don't worship people. They respect people. Mordecai, in from the history books, did his job very well. As a matter of fact, there was a time they reported people who were plotting against the king. And nobody did anything for him. So I want to paint a picture. Every time that Haman got to the gate, Mordecai would probably open the gate. But he was expecting him to roll on the floor. By the time we start to worship people because of what we can get. By the time, that's what we see in the world today. People will worship people just to get an advantage. But when a guy knew that as a Jew, you only worship Jehovah God. And notice, the same thing happened with Daniel. They said they will not bow. We can't bow to any other God. Let's look around us. What are the gods that we're bowing to today? People are bowing to the idol of money, bowing to the idol of connection. Just because of connection, some people can renounce their faith. Some people can even change their faith just because they want political connection. That's the world we live in. They can change their name 
just so that they can know, the people can think they are from one part of the country so that they can get contracts. People can roll on the floor just to marry somebody and get an advantage. Never worship any man. I cannot bow before God and bow before men. Honor people. Respect people. Why? God is a jealous God. Anybody who is worshipping you, you've got to correct them. Sometimes people will be worshipping you because they want to get an advantage. Correct them immediately. Don't worship me. God can destroy anybody taking his worship. God can disgrace anybody giving his worship to another. I fear God. I see some things happening because of people looking for benefits. They are worshipping people. God can strike them there just to prove that he alone is God. That you don't give his praise. God doesn't joke with his glory. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. What do we see playing out here in the hatred that Haman had for Mordecai? Here we are seeing something that we are still seeing in our present day. We are seeing racism. That's racism. He hated him because he was a Jew. No other reason. Haman hated Jews. So it wasn't just Mordecai he hated. Okay, if he hated only Mordecai, he could have asked that Mordecai be sacked. But it was beyond Mordecai. He wanted all the Jews to be killed. And so, even in our present world, we see these things. Brethren, sisters, brothers, it is evil to hate another person just because that person belongs to another race or tribe. So we see these things playing out on a global level. It's racism. On a national level, it's tribalism. Even in the church, you see white churches in America, you see black churches. In Nigeria, you see Igbo churches, you see Yoruba churches. We shouldn't relate with people just because they are from our tribe. Why? God created all human beings in his image and likeness. And so we must not reject anybody because they come from another tribe or judge them because they are from another race. As a matter of fact, if you go abroad, there are some shops you enter. When you're black, the minute you enter, they send somebody to be following you around because they think you're going to steal. You find out somebody will be following you. Do you need anything? What can I get for you? As the person is saying, what have you come to do here? <laughs> and the minute you, you want to pay, you bring out, especially when you're from Nigeria, you bring out your $100 bills, you know, we, we, we move by cash. They bring out their pen and test it. Because this person is either bringing something fake. It's just a prejudice. But they don't accord those kind of things to other people. What are we talking about in America? Police brutality is rooted in racism. It is not of God. And when we even come down to our nation, we see tribalism. And so, this is something that as children of God, we must not undo when we see it. I studied sociology for my first degree, and there is a concept in sociology called ethnocentrism. Ethnocentrism means you feel or believe that you are superior, that your own ethnic tribe and your culture is superior to that of another person. You just believe you're superior. The fact that you are black doesn't make you inferior. The man at the White House has only nine ribs. The man in Mushi has nine ribs. God created us all the same, just as opportunities are different. And so, ethnocentrism means that you feel for no just reason, because I am Yoruba, I'm superior to everybody. Or because I am Igbo, I am I know more than everybody. Or because I am Calabar, or you, you begin now to look down on other people. Ah, you can just be saying, I don't like Calabar people, they steal. Just because your Calabar ourselves stole from you, does not mean all Calabar people steal. And we just make up our, our minds and begin to act towards people. And the minute we see people that they are from that part of the nation or that part of the country of, of the world, we immediately develop an attitude of resentment. That is not of God. The Lord will help us this morning. And what do we see? These things play out even in the choice of marriage. It begins to play out even in the people you employ and the people you associate with. That's why the fact that we are speaking in tongues. If your child wants to marry somebody from another part, you say, where? 
<laughs> Marry the person that we can understand one another. But the, the child will say, well, mom, this person is born again. I know. I, it, doesn't that happen? Look at Esther. She was a foreigner. But God granted her access. Today I'm decreeing anywhere in the world, God will grant us access, grant our sin access. In the name of Jesus, every resentment that wants to come and we pull it down in Jesus' mighty name. So, Haman had prejudice. When we're talking about prejudice, prejudice is having an unfavorable opinion or feeling which you have formed without any reason or knowledge. You just form that opinion. And we're all children of God. And we see it. Why do people form cliques even in the house of God? We form cliques because we have formed an opinion about some other people. This is not of God. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. What is the root cause of prejudice and hatred? Just like him and her. It is born out of personal pride. Why do you think you're superior to somebody else? Opportunity might have brought who chose where you were born into. You might have been born with a silver spoon. You didn't do it by yourself. So that doesn't mean you should look down on somebody else who doesn't have the same opportunity as you. The person may just even be more brilliant. There are many things you know that other people don't know. Just that, like there are many things you don't know that other people are experts in. It's just your time and space. When it gets to your time and space, you reign and rule for respect other people. So when you are in your spot where things are working for you, Haman was in a spot where things were working for him. He was favored by the king. He, the king loved him, but he was looking down on somebody else. We shouldn't do that. That's not of God. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And so when you look at the book of Esther, you are going to see that this woman was determined that her glory would shine despite the opposition. And what did she do? She had to arise in courage. She had to arise in courage. I want to believe, even as the queen, Haman was well respected and Haman had position. So knowing that such a person was against her must have put fear in her heart. In her heart. She was just a young girl who just married a king by chance. We see such things happening even in our world just by chance. And so, she must have been afraid, but she rose up. And not only did she rise up in courage, she rose up with defiance, knowing there was even a decree against her, that nobody goes to the presence of the king. Today, I am decreeing into your life and mine, for our glory to shine. Whatever step we need to take, we receive courage to take it. In the name of Jesus. So, in Esther chapter number 5, Esther arose when she had done the necessary spiritual preparation. Never arise without doing the necessary spiritual preparation. So I want us to look at Esther chapter number four. We're going to follow step by step and see Esther chapter number four, verse 16 to 17. If you're online, please open your Bible, Pastor Sheyali Wale. Good morning from Maryland. Good morning, good morning. Please open your Bible to Esther Chapter number 4, verse 16 to 17. Esther 4, 16 to 17. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me. And neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Praise the Lord. Let's, let's, let's dissect those two verses quickly in looking at the grand plan of Esther. Number one, spiritual preparation is important if you want to make it in life. If you want to make it in 2019, if you say you have prayed enough, you don't want to pray again, you are joking. Spiritual preparation Spiritual preparation must never be undermined. Look at what she did. She said, I will pray, gather my maidens. So we're seeing the power of prayer. She said, I will pray, gather the Jews to pray for me. When people are praying for you or you're praying for someone, that's intercession. Okay, so she prayed. There was intercession going on. What are the altars that she activated? She activated her personal altar. 
I will pray. Then she said, I will gather my maidens to pray for me. She gathered her immediate congregation. Sometimes you're in a problem. You've got to gather members of your family to pray. Don't say they are sleeping. The children are sleeping. Those children are spiritual beings. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name. So, there will be, there may be an issue. Maybe you have an office. You have a business. Things are not going right. That's why you, the Bible says the only parable we can do is that of believers. You understand? That's the only click we can keep. Because the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. That's why your business, if there's a problem, you gather all your workers. Somebody will now tell you, I don't know, I'm, I don't belong to that religion. Ah, how can you work here? <coughs> Sometimes you see affliction in your business, you can call a vigil. Everybody, because that's where the salaries are coming from. You will even see people from other religions who have the spirit of God, they will come. And that's how you will know people with a contrary spirit. If you want to, you have to raise an altar in your office, in your job, because the business, the marketplace is a spiritual place. It's a spiritual battleground. Anywhere you're making money, people bring all sorts of sacrifices. Imagine you waking up or going to your place of work and you see a sacrifice in front of your gate and say, oh, oh, these people, they are like stupid people, please, uh, security man, uh, take this thing away, sweep it, sweep. Oh God! A Yoruba proverb says, "If somebody sends a, a snake to you, eh, you will not send uh, a rat to that person. You must arise, know that this person has invested an evil power. So you also must go to your altar. You also must gather strength. So number one, she prayed. She gathered her maidens. Then she said, Monica, gather the Jews national altar. Look at the free altars." that Esther activated before she stood before the king. You think it's because of the miracle? Or because of the lipstick? No way. We do our spiritual work first. Ever before this, this program started, intercessors were here praying, lifting up, fasting before the Lord, that people in Abu Dhabi everywhere will get born again. And so, things may not be as simplistic as in what are we doing as children of God? We wake up when it is two minutes to go. As we are brushing our hair, brushing your teeth, you are praying, no God. It's such a serious prayer. You that you want to face the world. That's what they call a conscience pacifying prayer. Tell your neighbor, don't waste your time. Conscience pacifying prayers do not work. When you are confronting a major issue. And so, she activated her personal altar, her immediate congregation, the national altar. And what happened? Favor and great grace was released to her. So, read Esther chapter number 5 verse 1. What else? We're looking at step by step what Esther did. Esther chapter number 5 verse 1. Now it came to pass on the third day mm -hmm. that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house. God bless you. Esther put on her royal apparel and stood <laughs> where the king could see her, though she didn't go straight to the king. She didn't just walk through. Esther was a very, very wise woman, calculating, testing the waters. She had prayed. And before she went before the king, she didn't put on her casual clothing. She had to go for the best. Put on your best assets as you face your challenges in life. I see some people who are plagued with mediocrity. They always have this nonchalant attitude. You've got to be adequately equipped for the challenges of your, of your life. You must be adequately equipped in the place of study, in the place of finding out. Get information. Imagine you. You were granted an interview for a job. And there you are in the interviewer's office. You have not gone to the website of the company. You have not studied their website. You, by the time you are sitting in front of your interviewer, you must have gone through the website. You've got to know the product of the company. You've got to know their fast moving lines. You've got to know the name of the MD. You've got to know their share capital. You've got to have so much information that when you start to talk, they will respect you. But I see a lot of people, the door is open. They are not prepared. Esther was prepared. She put on her royal 
apparel. The onus is on you and I to get ourselves prepared for our opportunities in 2019. Opportunities are there. I saw online that somebody packaged chewing stick. I don't know how many people saw it. And said it is organic toothbrush. And they are selling it in the UK for 16 or oh, was it US for $16 or UK for an incredible amount of Paco? Ijebu, Paco Ijebu. Somebody is selling it. Do you know the world is so big? I was just thinking, opportunities abound everywhere. If you choose to see problem, that's what you will see. Even in this Nigeria, as tough as they say Nigeria is, opportunities are everywhere for those who will open their eyes and humble themselves. But everybody wants to work in all company and bank. So, you and I must put on our best. Demonstrate. When you have put on your best, you demonstrate knowledge with confidence. As you are sitting in front of that interviewer, imagine me wanting to employ somebody, in, maybe for a, an office in Daughters of Destiny, and the person is sitting before me, and the person is saying, is this a church or what is it? Just say, so, you, you, where, where did you get your letter from interview? Uh, what, what do you people do here? Is it only on Wednesdays? You should have studied. Esther did not, she didn't go to the king's presence without being prepared. She put on her royal apparel. Put on your best attitude in 2019. Put on your best behavior. Put on a smile. You're going somewhere for favor. Put on a smile. It will melt down the heart of people. It works all the time when I pass through a, a, a police post when I'm traveling. As soon as I wind up, the man is with his gun, ready to waste my time. Uh oh, gangsta! Hey, officer, toilet! <laughs> Say, madam, madam, he doesn't know me. <laughs> Anything for your boys. We didn't want to drink ice water, we are not asking for bribe. <laughs> That's the Nigerian way. <laughs> but if you get there and you squeeze your face, you say, bring your learner's permit. Bring your uh, tinted glass. Bring your sea caution. He will begin to ask, and you two, you are squeezing your face as if you are my dad. He will frustrate you. That's the way life is. Attitude is everything. Attitude. In 2019, your attitude must be right so that you can achieve. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, Esther stood. For your glory to appear in 2019, proper positioning. You've got to stand where God has put you. I see some people going all over the place. I'm not saying don't have multiple income stream. Before you can have a multiple income stream, you must have a major income stream. When you have a major income stream, then you begin to diversify. But some people, they start something, shut it down. Go to another place, start another one, shut it down. That's not the way to succeed. Esther stood. Know your calling. Know your purpose and stand there. Hey, Nathaniel Bassi has been standing in gospel music in Nigeria for years. Standing, blowing the trumpet during the days of Pastor Tio David. When he was in the choir, Nathaniel blow, Nathaniel blow. That was what Pastor Lynn Pastor Esco used to say. Now everybody knows, they know him all over the world. Joyce Mayer has been standing in women's ministry. She didn't go to another thing. She focused on that. Barack Obama has been standing in politics. All of a sudden, as the first black man, he became the president. In 2019, stand firm. Esther wore the apparel and stood. As you begin to stand, what happens? As you stand firm in your calling and purpose for years and you don't waver, all of a sudden, your glory will begin to shine. Favor will begin to come. The king noticed her. Saw her in her beauty. She was not moving about. She was steady. Somebody in 2019 be steady. Things may not be working right now. It may not be where you want it to be, but continue to get more fire. You know when you want to have a big feast and you call those women to cook. When the fire is dying down, what do you do? You get more firewood. Some of you, you need to get more firewood. I was telling one of my sisters who said, oh, I want to start this other business. I said, don't start this other business. This one you are doing is a good business. You have a bakery. People eat bread. I see it's a thriving business. Add more money. They get your nafta. Continue. When you get the nafta, you will bring to another level. Somebody got to stand firm. Be focused and you will obtain favor. Somebody, your glory will shine. 
You know what Esther did? She rose up by courage and she got rewarded. Anytime you rise up in courage, you will always be rewarded. Somebody this year, your glory will shine. Let's rise up on our feet. Praise the Lord. Just before we go into the prayers, just before we go into the prayers of today from our book, 100 Days of Fire and Power, again like we did yesterday so that we know that we are getting, thank you Pastor Tony, thank you, God bless you. I'd like one person to tell me what has resonated with you from today's study that you have never heard before. I know we've all studied the book of Esther, who can tell us again from today's study that is peculiar and is new from the study of the book of Esther. Anyone from the audience, please, you need to come right here. We don't have much time. Can you tell us what resonated with you? What's, what's the new thing you learned today? What is that new nugget you picked from the study of the book of Esther? Prison from national prison from environmental barriers from gender limitations. 
prayer again. Samson made a mistake that drowned his glory. Sometimes some people are doing well. They just make one single mistake and that mistake will finish them. We're going to cry, Father Lord, in your mercy, in 2019 and beyond, our glory, the glory of our family members will not be drowned. We won't make mistakes. And any child that has made mistakes, it can be drugs. Some people never recover from drugs. Some people never recover from a, a marital problem. Some people never recover. Lift up your voice. Wherever we have made mistakes, mercy redeem us. In the name of Jesus, let mercy redeem our spouses. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Prayer number seven. Say every evil word that has ever been spoken against my life or the life of my family member or my work or my ministry by me or somebody else. I raise up the blood of Jesus and I decree, let them be cancelled right now. In the name of Jesus, let them be cancelled. Every negative war, I cancel you. I decree by aborting in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Say every hindrance and conspiracy against my glory be shattered. In the name of Jesus, every hindrance, every conspiracy against my glory be shattered. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice. Say, Father Lord, raise a helper for me. In high places, raise a helper for the work of my hands. Raise a helper for my children. In high places, raise a helper for daughters of destiny. In high places, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Say, I prophesy that my head will be lifted out of every prison of life. My head is lifted out of shame, out of debt, out of sickness. The head of my family members are lifted. In the name of Jesus, in 2019, we will not bury our head in shame. In the name of Jesus, amen. Say, I prophesy that I will receive kind words of encouragement. I receive a new garment of honor. In the name of Jesus, I receive divine provision throughout 2019. In the name of Jesus, say it is well in Nigeria. I lift up Israel. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. Quickly pray concerning your prayer points. Whatever it is you are believing God for this year, lift it up before the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Every desire of your heart. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's take our confession and declaration. Say, I want you to Acts 1 verse 8. I, I did with my family members. We are empowered by the Holy Spirit to have global relevance and make global impact in 2019. 2019 is my year of global impact. This is my year of multiple congratulations and outstanding conquest. I call for restoration of all that I lost in the past seasons of my life. I declare that this year I am above and never beneath. Favor is my portion and the lines are falling for me in pleasant places. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Bring out your oil as we get ready for the Holy Communion. Anoint yourself and decree and declare a fresh oil. My glory will shine in the name of Jesus. If you're just joining us for this program, you need to get your anointing oil. You need to get your Holy Communion. We are breaking bread for 100 days. I'm anointing ourselves. Psalm 92 verse 10. It says, your horn shall be exalted like the horn of the unicorn and your head anointed with fresh oil. And so this morning, we anoint ourselves and we decree, begin to declare over your life, be your own prophet this morning. I anoint myself and I decree and declare fresh grace, fresh unction, favor, abundance, open doors in the name of Jesus. The oil of God is upon me. The mark of our Lord Jesus is upon me. Hence no man shall trouble me or trouble my family members. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Wherever you are, go get your Holy Communion. If you're just joining us, go and get juice, biscuit, and something from your fridge. Bless it in the name of the Lord as we partake of the Holy Communion. The Word of God says we should not partake of water. The wine is blessed. The bread is blessed in the name of Jesus. 
before you partake, forgive all those that have offended you so you do not partake unworthily. Father, we bless your name. We lift up your flesh and your blood. And we say today, we receive empowerment in the name of Jesus. We receive favor in Jesus' name. Partake of the bread. Father, we thank you for your blood that was poured out for us as we partake a new lease of life. In Jesus' name, partake of the wine. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Lift up your voice and pray. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Blessed, blessed be your name. To you be all glory. To you be all honor and adoration. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Broadcast is from Daughters of Destiny. My name is Busola Chegede. And we are here together till April the 10th. In Jesus' name, if Jesus tarries. Right now, is there anybody worshipping with us for the first time in this hall? Wave to me. If it's your first time in this place, anyone in the congregation, hallelujah. Please let us invite more and more people to join us. Right now, we're moving on. We have two things to help us even as we prepare spiritually. We're taking care of our health, healthy living, healthy eating. And so before I call on the worshiper to end the service for us in worship quickly, I want to invite Pastor Ediri Meshiru to come and lead us on today's celery juice preparation. So what are we doing? We have a 100 days challenge to take celery juice. If you can't afford celery, take cucumber. Juice cucumber or ugu and drink it every morning. I'm Ediri Meshiru. This morning we have here with us, we have celery. Celery is a nutrient-dense vegetable. It belongs to a family of carrots, bee, parsley, and onions. It is very, very nutritious. One of the most important uh, or amazing parts about celery it is it is um, it's low in calorie. And what calorie does is it helps to burn fat that instigates weight loss. Now, are you challenged with your weight? Are you struggling with your weight? Do you want to shed that stop of body fat? Do you desire to be a size? Do you desire to be a size 16 or a size 12? Now, this is the nutrient bullet that you need to help keep that stop of fat out of you. It is very easy to make and it is good when taking in an empty store. And another beautiful fact about um, the celery is that. It has a lot of antioxidants. Antioxidant does to the body. It protects the cells. It protects our blood vessels and our organs against um, oxidative damage that is caused by free radicals. And another thing is that it contains um, phytonutrients that help to fight against inflammation. It is very, very good. And celery can be taken, it's best taken raw. Because any green light food is taken raw, and celery juice or celery on its own, it is a green light food because it belongs to the uh, traffic light. Okay. And as we all know, that traffic light, you can see your traffic light when you're driving, it has three signals. It gives you the green signal, the signal, it gives you the amber signal, and it also gives you the red signal. What the green signal means is go, which means you're free, the road is clear. So also, celery is a green light food. It's telling you you can eat as much as you want to eat. Take go. It is free. It is no nutrients. It is low in calorie. It is high in nutrients, and it is eating raw. Praise the Lord. Now let's look at um, let's. They are very medicinal. It is good for 
can actually use it raw, you can use it for your fried rice, you can use it for your salmon. It is very, very good.
Daughters of Destiny, we want every woman to know that help is always available. We are here to offer godly and practical counsel for various issues peculiar to you as a woman. Contact us today via our counseling hotlines 0708 307 6210 and 0909 328 8336. You will overcome. You are a daughter of destiny. Daughters of Destiny.